So welcome everyone. We're here to talk about stress that people experience in their household or their families after we've been here a year in the pandemic. And with me, I have Bridget Mathiason. I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Hi, thanks for having me. My name is Bridget Mathiason. I'm a psychotherapist at Valley Medical Psychiatry and Counseling. Thanks for being here. So um, what are some of the challenges that many of us are facing with our family members or our household right now? I know in my family, there's five of us, and sometimes we just feel like we're all on top of each other and, and can't find a corner to be by ourselves. So what are some of the things that you're hearing from some of your clients or patients? Yeah, you know, there has been a significant increase in stress and anxiety, and that's it. I mean, I am hearing that um, they're feeling smothered, broken routines, um, broken schedules, and um, some challenges getting along with other family members in the, you know, in the household, increased arguments and irritability, just can't find space for themselves has been really challenging. So for those of us who are having some of that tension, what are some suggestions that you have that uh, folks can do for themselves or within their household to help address some of that? You know, I really encourage people to really try to tap into where they're having the issues. Just try to be really specific about what's bothering them. And I think that way you can identify a plan. I would talk to other members of the family and share those concerns to see if you can collectively come together to um, to resolve those things. I mean, there are three, you know, the, the three C's I call them is communicate, collaborate, and connect. And I think those three things are really important and should be designed in, in the structure of the family in order to, you know, for things to run smoothly. And so for those of us who have younger ones in the home, uh, you know, kids, they maybe aren't, you know, able to see their friends, they're not going to school. Um, but they're still experiencing stress. What suggestions do you have for helping those younger ones, your kids? You know, our little ones, they really look to us for modeling, you know, good behavior and things like that. So if we can take care of ourselves, that can help them with their emotions. Um, I think listening to them to find out too what they're struggling with, you know, not being able to uh, see their friends, to go outside, to go places can be can be really difficult. So I would try to be as creative as possible and to give them the, the best experience um, that you can. You know, if they wanna go to a friend's house, always, if they can't do that, always offer another option. Whatever they give you, have another option um, readily available. And, you know, I would be um, um, open and honest with children and talk to them about what's going on but also give them some hope that things are going to get better and always plan something, you know, to look forward to. And so say it's getting to be a little bit too much. What are some signs and symptoms of conflict or interpersonal stress where it's starting to be too overwhelming? Yeah, you know, I think if um, you say that to yourself, you know, what we say to ourselves, like this is too much, uh, that's a good indication. If you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling hopeless, those will be good indications as well. I mean, I also look for changes in mood, um, changes in functioning. Those can indicate that they're, that um, you might need more support. And um, in speaking of getting support, what do you recommend that people can do to start to get some support? Well, you know, there are things that you can do for yourself, and then there are things that you can do outside of yourself. And um, it's self-care, you know, every uh, patient that I work with, I give them a self-care wheel. And that self-care wheel covers um, six quadrants, I believe. There is the psychological portion. So that is um, talking to your therapist, journaling, um, talking to someone else about how you feel. The other quadrant is um, emotional. That's where you're being good to yourself. You're supportive, you're self-compassionate, you have good words for yourself, you're complimenting yourself. Um, spirituality is another area where we're tapping into our, um, our faith for support or, um, or things like yoga or other kinds of uh, philosophies and things like that. Um, 
in personal development, is there something that you've always wanted to do, learn a language or um, start your business or even creating a, a website for yourself? One of the free websites can be um, addressing that area. Um, the other two areas are professional um, and, you know, working from home can be challenging. So building some structure around that and some planning around that. But then exercise, that's a big one. Getting out of the house, walking, um, you know, just, just moving your body a little bit. Um, and, and so those are six of the, the six self-care areas that can really okay. give structure and balance. And then uh, if people feel like um, beyond that, they need additional support, um, some guidance from a professional, what do you recommend? Uh, you know, I recommend, you know, for people to make that appointment. You know, right now, I think it can be challenging to get into an appointment to see a therapist. So if you just go ahead and make the appointment, you can always cancel if you feel like you don't need it, but at least you will, you know, have that scheduled. Um, other things that you can do that are, are readily available now are call the, um, the hotlines. Here, right here in Washington, we have Washington Listens, which is a hotline. I think it's Monday through Friday, nine to nine, and I think it's shorter on the weekends. But we also have Crisis Connection, which is a 24-hour hotline that can be really helpful. And then for those of you who like to um, text, we even have a, um, uh, a, a crisis text. So, so there are ways to still seek that support now, but I think it is important to get in and, and, and schedule an appointment with someone. Great. Well, thank you so much for your suggestions, Bridget. And for those of you who are listening right now, we will have links to the websites that she just listed. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care.